Greetings and welcome to Let's Talk About Books, baby, where we talk with your favorite LGBTQ plus author. I'm Anita Kelly and my guest today is Leslie Newman. Hello, Leslie. Hi, Anita. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, welcome. It's so great to have you here. Um, this is your second time on the show with us. Yes. Yeah, so it's exciting. Um, so uh, let's just jump right in and talk about what's been happening in your world. Um, and you have not one, but two new books coming out. Is that correct? Actually, three. Three? Actually, four. Whoa, yeah. you've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they all kind of bottlenecked, you know, that you write especially picture books, you know, at different times. And then depending on the illustrator, depending on the printing process, sometimes they all come out at the same time. Wow, that's fantastic. So I am familiar with two. Uh, let's see, it is The Fairest in the Land and The Babka Sisters, right? Babka. Babka. Babka Sisters. All right. I knew I was going to screw that up. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had babka? I I think I have. Is that is that like a bread? So it's sort of like bread, but not really, and sort of like cake, but not really. Okay. It's the best of both. Okay. All right. I um I used to work at uh, a college, and I was uh, friends with uh, the head the head of our Hillel uh, department, and uh, yeah, I used to go there for dinner a lot, and uh, so I I know I've had it. Um, but yeah, so so tell us about those two, and then we'll jump into your other two also. Okay, so The Fairest in the Land is a book about two best friends, Benjamin and Annabelle, and they're playing dress up, and they both want to be the princess. So what's going to happen? So that is what that book is about. It's a story about um, friendship and being your authentic self and supporting your friends. And then the Bobka sisters is about um, two sisters named Esther and Hester, who have pets, uh, a cat named Chester and a dog named Lester. And then their new neighbor, Sylvester, moves in and they each decide to make him a Bobka for Shabbat. And they're a little competitive. So each of them thinks they make the best Bobka in the world. And Sylvester gets to be the Bobka tester. Wow. How do you keep all that? like in order huh. <laughs> <laughs> I know. it's really a fun and slightly challenging book to read out loud but you know I'm a poet by uh trade and education and so I'm always paying attention to sound and rhythm of words okay great great well those sound like two really fun books and um the fairest in the land sounds like it's very timely um with what's going on in the world today um, sure to be banned in Florida, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I just <clears throat> just saw uh, the uh, Florida lost lawsuit just today. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good news. Um, yeah. But I'm sure we'll see these things going to the Supreme Court eventually. Um, right. Yeah. yeah. So um, what are the other two books that you have? So the other two books, one is called I Can Be Me. It's illustrated by uh, Maya Cristina Gonzalez. And it's just a fun book uh, written in rhymed couplets that feature six gender creative children as they uh, go about just playing with all kinds of identities and costumes and being themselves. And it's a safe space for children, both in the book and the reader to explore what that would feel like to just be completely free with no expectations and, you know, just be who you are. Wow. I'm, I'm looking at your background and uh, I see the book behind you. It looks fun. I love the co the cover. So, um, and what is the fourth book then? So those three books that we just talked about are already out in the world. Oh. The fourth book is coming out in September and it is called Always Matt, a tribute to Matthew Shepard. And Matthew Shepard, for listeners who might not know, was a gay college student at the University of Wyoming in 1998 when he was kidnapped, robbed, beaten, tied to a fence and left to die. And he did die six days later. And I was the keynote speaker for Gay Awareness Week, as they called it back then, at his school. So I arrived on campus the day that he died. So I've been very connected to that story 
for 25 years now. And so I wrote a previous book called October Morning, a song for Matthew Shepard, which explores this hate crime in 68 poetic monologues. 25 years later, what I've done is I have written a book length poem, which has been fully illustrated, that celebrates his life and legacy. Um, so that the book, of course, addresses what happened to him, but it more celebrates who he was and who he wanted to be in the world and the people who have carried on his legacy by doing good deeds. Wow, that's great. That sounds like a wonderful book. And is that is that a children's book or... So it's very interesting. The uh, Matthew Shepard Foundation had been asking me for years to write a picture book about Matt. And I found that really challenging. Um, but so I came up with this text and my editor at Abrams, who is wonderful, said, I love this, but it's not a children's book. We're going to publish it as a family book for ages uh, 14 and up for families to read together, hopefully, and to discuss the issues that it brings up. And it's, it's uh, you know, each page has like two lines from the poem and it's fully illustrated. I think it's about 100 pages. So that seems like a um, very, I'll say, responsible way to publish it in that um, you're asking families to sit together and talk about this. Right. Um, and, and it is by far one of the saddest um experiences saddest situations um that i'm aware of uh within our um you know population it's just uh it's sad. you know his story really touches people because i have been giving presentations about what happened to him for 25 years now and still um, people who are old enough to remember where they were, what they were doing when it happened, are very affected by it. Um, high school uh, students who weren't even born yet are very affected by it. It really just touches a nerve. It does. It really does. Um, and, you know, kudos to his parents. Like, Judy is just amazing and has just carried the torch um, for the last 25 years, making people aware of what happened to, to Matthew, but, you know, what could happen to your child, right? Uh, this is the reality of the world we live in. Um, and, and right now, unfortunately, um, it's worse. I just saw uh, HRC put out a, um, a warning, a travel warning uh, for the United States. Um, Isn't that crazy? I mean, not crazy, but it's just like shocking. It's so shocking it that in 2023, I saw that also. And, you know, I'm second generation. My grandparents all came here fleeing pogroms from Russia. Um, and, you know, they thought they were coming to a safe country. And for many years, that was seemed true. And now, was, frankly, I'm not so sure. I mean, that is a really, that's a, a big stance to take to put out a travel warning like that. It absolutely is. I had heard that other countries had um, travel warnings about uh, visiting the United States, not because of LGBTQ plus issues, but because of the gun violence. Um, mm -hmm. But this is, this brings it home, really. It really does. Um, yeah. And, and it's, it is shocking. Totally shocking. Uh, I never thought I'd see this. Um, I thought we were way beyond this, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, um, speaking of <laughs> what's going on in the world, um, your, uh, one of your first books, I think it was um, one of your first books, Heather Has Two Mommies, um, was uh, banned. Uh, it was one of the most banned books in the 90s. Um, and... Um, you know, when I brought up uh, The Fairest in the Land, you immediately said, soon to be banned in Florida. Um, and do you think that will take hold and it will be on that banned book list? I can't imagine that it won't be. You know, it's about a little boy playing uh, dress up in princess clothes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a little misleading, I think, because I think the book was one of the most challenged. You know, when a book gets challenged, it doesn't nece necessarily become banned. Mm -hmm. um, though now, you know, back then in the 90s, what would often happen is a parent would see that the book was in their child's school and, um, you know, make 
a fuss about that. There were no statewide laws saying that you could get arrested if you read Heather Has Two Mommies to your second grade class. So things have really escalated, you know, in, in to me in a very uh, negative, frightening and dangerous way. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's a, a totally different spin on what banned books may, mean, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it is scary. It's scary for teachers. You know, they don't want to risk their careers. Um, right. Librarians. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's very different. Um, but, you know, when I um, talk about Heather Has Two Mommies, because I do talk about it. I love that book. Um, people know it. People are familiar with it. Um, so that's great. You know, whatever publicity that it received, good or bad, uh, everyone knows it. You know, OK, it was just a Jeopardy clue. I just have to tell you that. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> yeah. That's but yeah. none of the contestants got it. What? Nope. Well, one of them said it, it was it was a little awkwardly worded, the clue, I must say. But it was something like in a non-traditional family, especially in children's literature, Heather has two of these. So, of course, the, the correct answer is mommies. And um, one of the contestants said moms, and that was not accepted. Oh. And the other two contestants did not venture a guess. Okay, so they were close. The one was very close. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, you, you know, you know you've made it when you are a Jeopardy question, right? Absolutely. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. So, um, you know, I uh, have spoken to you in the past, and, and you kind of strike me as someone who's reserved, quiet, kind of prim and proper. And I don't know, I may be way off base. That's just my initial impression of you. And, um, you know, it. how does it feel like to, to publish these books that one was on the banned list, probably still is banned, uh, and one may soon to be banned, um, you know, that, that seems very um, kind of rebellious and um, very different uh, temperament. I guess you quietly go about go about it. <laughs> well, to quote Walt Whitman, I contain multitudes, right? <laughs> Many sides to me. But, you know, I come from a line of very strong Jewish women. Like I just mentioned, my, my grandparents who were immigrants and my, grand, my maternal grandmother, who I was very close to, lived to be 99. Right. And she was very she didn't have a lot of formal schooling. She, I think, went through just fourth grade. But, you know, she was very smart and she was a survivor. Yeah. And so I learned from her a great deal of stubbornness in a good way. Yeah. And, you know, if someone says to me, you're not allowed to do that, that just fuels my fire. You know, my grandmother used to say, just because they say no to me, you think I'm finished in that fabulous Yiddish accent that she had. But, you know, it. You can't tell me that I can't write and publish these books, especially because I really believe that children need these books. I mean, that's why I write these books. These books, I don't think it's exaggerating to say, can save a child's life. You know, for example, circle back to Matthew Shepard, if the two men who killed him grew up reading books that showed a variety of families, two mom families, two dad families, a variety of sexualities, a variety of gender expression, uh, maybe they would have grown up more open-minded and wouldn't have felt that they had to kill something that obviously threatened them. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's too simplified, but I, you know, I do think that um, attitudes begin really young. And of course, you know, nobody comes into this world down the chute full of hate, I don't think. Right. You know, think about a little tiny baby, you know, so innocent and pure. And then so we're, they have to learn that from an adult. Yes. They right. Absolutely do. Yeah. So I just think the more positive messages we can give people starting very young to be open minded and open hearted, the better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. And I think that, you know, it, it could we, we can't predict, you know, what could have been. But uh there's a possibility that that could have changed things for those two guys. Um, you know, I just read um, a story. Um, it's been on social media. You, 
may have seen it about a, a young girl who went to the library and it was a book that was recently banned but before it was banned uh, she had brought it home and she had no way to tell her mom that she was being sexually abused except to give her this book and say this is happening to me um, wow. yeah so you know they serve a purpose and they help people um it's just uh yeah well you know i'm i'm preaching to the choir right um, right <laughs> oh, always part you know a conundrum right that's what happens the people who need to hear what we have to say you know are not open to listening yeah. often yeah no, you're right. So I have to let me. I'll tell you a little story. Once I was giving a talk about Heather has two mommies, and afterwards there was the Q and A, and a man stood up in the audience, and he was wearing a business suit, and he had a thick book that looked to me like it was probably a Bible, and he said to me, "Has anyone from the Christian right ever heard you speak and changed their mind about how they feel about LGBTQ rights?" And I said, "Not that I know of." And he said, "Well, now one person has." Oh my! And I will ne I will never forget him. That's never fabulous. forget him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a great story. I love that. See, I was just going to ask you: Do you see yourself as an agent of change? And you are. You are totally. And you know what? It, my tagline on my website is "Changing the world, one book at a time." There you go. You are. You absolutely <laughs> are. You know, and and uh, I thank you for our community. Um, oh, that's awesome! It really is. Um, so do you, um, do you ever like receive, um, I don't know, for lack of another term, like hate mail? Um, you know, it's funny because with the internet, you would think that I'd receive more, but I received more like through the mail, uh, sent to my publisher when Heather has two mommies first came out mm -hmm. in the 1990s. Okay. Um, but you know, I really, don't, I mean, I'm sure there's discussions, you know, that I'm not aware of all over the internet about, you know, what a horrible book this is and, you know, whatever, but, um, you know, I try not to pay attention to that. I just do my job. My job is to create literature that reflects the world in a realistic way so that children can feel validated and can learn. Yeah. And I think that, you know, um, there are, it's, it's a small minority of folks who um, have issue with Heather has two mommies or, you know, any book, right? It, it, it is not the majority of folks. Um, and so it makes sense to me that you probably wouldn't receive hate mail um, because folks who are, you know, looking at those books, they're not going to, they're not, you know, they're okay with it, right? They're not going to send you hate mail. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but you know, they, well, you know, I'd rather talk about the wonderful letters I've gotten from kids. Aww. Yeah. Please so, share a story with us. Well, um, I there was a kid uh, who sent me a letter about he had read my book Sparkle Boy and he said, um, thank you for writing Sparkle Boy. What I love best about it is everything. And it was a card and he put sparkles all over the card. Aww, that's so <laughs> and sweet. I loved that. That is so and I, sweet. I've had, um, you know, a kid say to to his parents, um, "Can we get a dog and a cat like Heather?" Which I loved. That was his. That was the main thing that struck this child. It wasn't that you know Heather has two moms. Heather had a dog and a cat, yeah, right? So that to was him, his you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And um, kids have read um, the fairest in the land, and you know they, they are not phased that that Benjamin wants to be the princess and Annabel wanted to be Pinches. What they talk about a lot is being a good friend and taking turns. Yes, that's nice. you know. Yeah, totally what it should be about. Right. Um, exactly. Yes. Yeah, see, and I think I, I kids get it. Uh, I think younger people get it. Um, and there's just that, again, that older, small minority of folks who don't understand. It's just all about kindness and love, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, I love Sparkle Boy. I, I love that name. Um Oh, yeah. so S Sparkle Boy is about a little boy named Casey and his big sister, Jessie, wears a sparkly skirt and paints her nails and wears sparkly bracelets. And he wants to do all those things, too. And 
she's not happy about it, but she can't really quite articulate why. But then when um, they go to the library and he's dressed in his sparkly finest and some other um, kids have trouble with it, she comes to his defense. Oh, that's sweet. That's awesome. So uh, I got to tell you, I have a, a nephew. If he knew I was telling this story, he would probably die. But uh, he, when he was young, he used to love sparkly. Everything was sparkly. Um, yeah, it was just, I, I should get him this book. Um, he would love it. I mean, what's not to love? I mean, I'm, your listeners can't really hear, but I'm wearing a sparkly sweater right now. You, you are. know, sparkles are fun. Yes, they are. They're, Why shouldn't any, anybody who wants to love sparkles yep. and wear sparkles? It's, they're party material, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, you said before that your, uh, your mom, I believe, said you were stubborn, right? Um, my grandma. Your grandma. But my mother, too, stubborn. for sure. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> so I have to tell you, uh, I am a Taurus. And my wife always tells me I'm stubborn. But I always tell her, no, 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 no. I am determined. Ah, I like that. <laughs> yeah. It's a, a positive spin on what would be like a, a negative attribute, right? But, um, well, you know, Gertrude Stein said, there's no such thing as repetition. There's only insistence. There you go. <laughs> I love that. That's perfect. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's great. So um, are you currently working on anything right now? Do you have a work in progress? Yeah, I'm actually just... Um, heard that the finishing touches are being put on a book that's coming out next year called Joyful Song, which is about a two mom family and their son welcoming their his new baby sister into the world and uh, participating in a naming ceremony at a synagogue. Aww. So I'm very excited about that because, you know, as I think, you know, I write books with Jewish content for kids and books with LGBTQ content. And finally, I'm being allowed to blend the two. That's nice. I love that. That's yeah, really I'm really excited about that. That's awesome. So when is that due out? So that's coming out next spring. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then I have a, a, a whole list of other children's books that are coming out in 2024 and 2025, possibly 2026, depending on, you know, you, you have to give the illustrator time to do their work. Yeah. And, and speaking of illustrator, how do you choose an illustrator? Do they find you or do you find them? Or does your publisher? Neither. Okay. So, you know, everybody thinks that the author and the illustrator work together and that's just not how it works. So the author sells the text to the publisher and it's the editor's job to find the illustrator. And, you know, usually I have in my contract that I have consultation about that. And that can range anywhere from um, give us some suggestions. Here's three people we're thinking about. Who do you like best to? We just signed somebody up. We hope you like them. Wow. So yeah. But you have to trust your editor and publisher and art director. And you have to realize that you're all on the same team and you all want the same thing, which is to create the most beautiful book possible that will appeal to children. Nice. Nice. Is it or has it been difficult to find good illustrators? Um no, you know, what? what's difficult often is a lot, a lot of times the good illustrators are booked up. You know, it's interesting because when, when the author sells a book to a publisher, your work is done. I mean, there's some revisions, but basically, you know, you're, you're pretty much done. But when an illustrator signs on with the publisher, their work is just beginning. So it's a very different process. Yeah. How long does that take that from the time, let's say, you... Uh, submit your work to the publisher or your editor and they, you know, choose or select a, uh, an illustrator and they complete their work. And, and do you, you have, I'm um, assuming final dibs on, on reviewing that. Is that correct or no? So not really. So um, I see sketches and can, at that stage I can give feedback. And then I, after that, I see artwork that's close to being finished. And then if there's any small changes that need to be made, I can give feedback. But it's really the illustrator, the art director and the editor really work together. Okay. And the way I think about that is if somebody gave me 32 pages of artwork and said, write a story about this. I wouldn't want the creator of that artwork leaning over my shoulder saying, no, no, that's not how I wanted it to be. You know, I would want the freedom. 
And so, so I, I feel like it's important to give that freedom to the illustrator. That's- but to answer your question, so I have had the shortest was I sold a book and it came out 18 months later. That's very rare. Um, that editor happened to have an illustrator in mind. He was looking for a project for her. So when my book came in, it was called Cats, Cats, Cats. And that was her specialty was cats. It was just, you know, like this match made in heaven. Wow. Um, I have had books where it's taken a year or two to find an illustrator. It's taken the illustrator a year or two to do the artwork. It's taken time to print the book. I had a book called Daddy's Song that was supposed to come out for my father's 70th birthday. It came out for his 80th birthday. <laughs> Luckily, he was still around. Wow. But but I would say usually it's about five years, really? four or five years. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I, I did not expect that. I thought there would be a quicker turnaround. Nope. Wow. That that shocks me, really. So, um, so like if you sold a picture book tomorrow, mm-hmm. it's 2023. That book, well, the earliest I could imagine that book coming out would be 2026. Unless there was a compelling reason to what they say call crash it through. So like if there was an important anniversary coming up, mm-hmm. like for example, this year is the 25th anniversary of the creation of the Matthew Shepard Foundation. So we definitely wanted Always Matt to come out this year. Yeah. And when is that coming out? That is coming out in September September. from Abrams Comic Arts. Okay. And is is that your publishing house that you use uh, across the board? I I use a lot of different publishing houses because one publishing house couldn't keep up with me. (laughs) (laughs) So, for example, the Bobka Sisters is from um, Carben, which is a independent Jewish publisher. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that was a really great match. Mm -hmm. And just by the way, it has a recipe in the back. So if you feel like being challenged in that way, it's not easy to make, but it's delicious. Awesome. I'll give it a try. um, Yes, please do. Um, I Can Be Me was published by Lee and Lowe, and they are the largest uh, multicultural publishing, children's publishing house in the country. The Fairest in the Land is Abrams Kids, which is different than Abrams Comic Arts. But, you know, they're under the same conglomerate, but it's a different branch. Okay. And Heather S. Tumamis came out from Candlewick. Okay. Wow. That's great. That's that's quite uh, a claim to fame is that you need various publishing houses because they can't keep up with you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, I feel very, very lucky. I love all my editors and they've just been terrific to work with. Oh, that's fantastic. Congratulations. That's great. Thank you. How many books do you have published? Do you know? I do. So I have 83 books published. Whoa. And I have nine more coming out under contract in the next couple of years. So my goal is 99. And then I'm going to reassess the whole thing. Holy smokes. I am amazed that I didn't expect that either. <laughs> That's yeah. Fantastic. Lots of surprises today. Yeah. That is fantastic. Really. Congratulations. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So um, what do you like most about writing children's books? Well, you know, Writing to me is writing, whether I'm writing a children's book or poetry for adults. Those are really the two major forms I write in, though I've also write short stories, novels, and essays. But, you know, the surprise of just putting words down on the page and seeing where they take me. Um, I love, love, love revision. So I, I know this sounds strange because I just told you I have uh, 92 books under my belt, but it's hard for me to come up with ideas. But once I have an idea, I work quickly and then I revise like at least 25 times. Really? And that's what's, yeah. And that's what's the the most fun for me is just like trying to find the right word. And the right word might not necessarily be about what the word means. It might be about the sound of the word. It might be about the rhythm of the sentence. So, you know, I put a lot of thought into language, which is my artistic medium. Yeah. That's great. That really is. Uh, 25 revisions is astounding because I know folks who write novels and they don't go through 25 revisions. Um, but Well, you know, all over my desktop, I'll have the name of a book and I'll, it'll say like the Bobka sisters. 
final revision. The Babka vision, the Bob, Babka sisters know really the final revision. The Babka sisters know, I mean it, this is the final revision. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh. So um, do you like to hear from your readers, uh, however young they may be? <laughs> oh, of course, of yeah. course. So, you know, really writing is communication. Yeah. So I love giving readings. Uh, I love giving poetry readings for adults. I love giving story times for kids. Um, yeah, I love connecting with the audience. That's great. That's wonderful. And and folks can find you on social media, um, website. Uh... Yep. So my website's just my name, lesliaenuma.com. Okay. And you, there's a, a button to push and you can email me right through there. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. So um, do you have any parting words for our listeners today? Um, let's see. What I would love is for your listeners to be active in their own communities. If you see something going on, like books being challenged, uh, there are many things you can do. If you have the time and energy, run for school board. I know that's a huge commitment. Um, if you want to show up at meetings, if you're able to do that, write letters to your newspaper, check books out of the library uh, that are under fire so the librarians see that these books are needed and um, welcomed in the community. Uh, buy books if you have the fi financial resources that are being challenged and just step up because it's it's a really frightening time. Yeah. And you know who really loses the most are the children. Yeah. I mean, children are smart, right? They pick up on everything. So there's going to be a kid who has is growing up with two moms or two dads that hears something on the news, yeah. you know, and you know, the saddest thing for me is the thought that that child will internalize the message that there's something wrong with their family. Yes. Yep. You know, that, that child should never get that message. No, not at all. No, you're absolutely right. Yep. And and it does happen, sadly enough. So, well, thank you, Leslie. Leslie Newman, um, for being with us today. Um, and um, that's all the time we have, unfortunately. But uh, this is Anita Kelly, and thanks for joining, Liz. Talk about books, baby. And uh, until next time, may your journey be lighthearted, peace be plenty, and be safe, folks.